So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our SVN or Subversion server set up and installed. And before we get into that, I do want to tell you that what I had said before in the previous module wasn't entirely true. I'd kind of simplified things a little bit. I had said basically that there were different implementations of Subversion. And the truth is that there are actually different packages of Subversion. So what I mean by that is that the Subversion source code is right here at subversion.apache.org. And so you can see this is the official site. And if we look here, we can see that there's an Apache Subversion release of 1.7.2. And you can go to the download page here. So if we go to this download page, what you're going to see here is it's a source release. So this source code you could build and you could build your subversion and build the client and the server from this. And you could basically have a subversion build, but that's not going to really help us a lot. We want to have something a little bit easier to work with. We don't want to have to build the source code. So you can look at the binary packages here and you can see there's different packages for each operating system. If we take a look at Windows, you can see there's different versions. Some, uh, for example, Clavnet has the client only. We have Silk SVN that has a 32 and 64 bit client. We have Visual SVN that's a client and server and a couple of others that support client and server. But the basic idea here is that they're all really using the same source code, but they're packaging this a little bit differently, putting some installers on top, making things a little bit nicer. It can be a little bit confusing here, but I'm going to try and stick to the simple stuff. And then what I want you to realize, though, as we go through this, is that you could use any one of these packages. As long as the subversion version numbers are the same, you can use a subversion client, a subversion server. They should work together because it's really based off of the same source code. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use Visual SVN. I think this is a pretty good one for setting up your server. And there's a free version of this, so that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to go to this Visual SVN server, and we're going to go to the download page here. And I'm going to go ahead and download this. And there's a free version, and there are, is also a pay version. If I look at this page here, you can see here that there's some licensing information. Just so you know here, there's a standard edition and an enterprise edition. We're just going to go ahead and use the standard edition in this case. So we don't need all of these extra features right now. So I'm going to go ahead and run this MSI. And it's going to take me to the setup wizard. And you can see here what it's going to install is it's going to install Apache HTTP server. As I said before, SVN can be served up through an HTTP protocol, so you can really access a version from anywhere. And it's going to install Apache subversion 1.7.2. So we'll go ahead and click next here. We'll accept the licensing agreement. And then you can see there's an option for the SVN server and the management console. We're going to go ahead and install both of these. There's a nice management console that comes with Visual SVN that I like. So I'm going to click next. And then for the custom setup, we're just going to go ahead and let the default be there. And we'll go ahead and let the repositories live on my E drive under E repositories. The server port, we're not going to use 443 simply because it's already being used by some services on my box. You might run into the same problem because this is the SSL port. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 84443. You just have to remember that that is the port that you're using. And we're going to use Subversion Authentication. You could also use Windows Authentication and probably in a real Windows environment you're going to want to do this. We're going to use Subversion Authentication in this case just to make it a little bit simpler because we're not really managing a domain here on my personal workstation. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and we're ready to install. The install goes pretty quick on this. It's not a lot to install. And we, you can see we can do this start the visual SVN server manager. So I'll click finish. And now we have installed visual SVN server. And let's just take a quick look at this tool just to see what's going on here. You can see we've got repositories here and this is one that I had already created before. We'll just go ahead and remove this. We've got users and groups and I'd already created a user. I'll go ahead and remove that one as well so we can start with a clean setup. It's already found that directory on my machine and so that's how it had picked up this information. And you can see that there's not a whole lot that we can do here. Really all we can do is delete the subversion files, clean up some of these temp temporary files or permanently delete these profiles and 
we can create new users and basically create a new repository. Not a whole lot really to the management console, but you really don't need a lot. There's not a whole lot that you really need to be able to do.